We're now going to re-examine the same examples that we looked at with the trapezoidal rule, now approximating with Simpson's rule. So looking at the same first example we did with the trapezoidal rule, we're now going to use Simpson's rule. And Simpson's rule is not quite as easy to explain because Everybody at some point in their lives, if you've taken any sort of algebra class, has probably found the area of a trapezoid, whereas most people probably haven't used Tom, Thomas Simpson's integral of P theorem to evaluate an integral. So we're just going to go straight into it and say, here you go, here's the formula. So the major differences here is instead of dividing by 2n, we have 3n. And in the trapezoidal rule, we sort of had the pattern of 1, to to everything in the middle was twos and then a one and obviously with Simpson's rule I've got a pattern of one four two four two four two so it's going to alternate with four and two and then of course still end with one but really the rest of it is exactly the same as what we've done so we're still going to look at a and b in the same way and look at delta x in the same way so let's take a look if I were looking at the integral from a to b of, this was x cubed plus 1, and I'm sorry, a to b is in this case 0 to 2, and remember even though I don't have it written on this page, we were using an n value of 4. We had 4 trapezoids, or in this case were 4 partitions. So just as I did before, I'm going to take b minus a, so 2 minus 0, and this time it's divided by 3n, so 3 times 4. And then I'm going to take the same way that I did before, I'm still going to look at delta x as being b minus a over n. So delta x is 2 minus 0 over 4, or 2 over 4, or 1 half. So that 1 half just tells me that I'm starting down here at 0, but each interval is going to increase by 1 half. So that's what that 1 half is for. So that means I'm going to take f of 0 and 4 f of 1 half and 2 f of 1 and 4 f of 3 halves and f of 2. In terms of, an, sorry, this should be approximately equal to because it is an approximation just as the trapezoidal rule was. As I continue to do my work here, 2 minus 0 is 2, and 3 times 4 is 12, so I have 2 over 12, or 1 over 6. And then we have f of 0, and again, in terms of showing work, you want to show me that you know math, right? So f of 0, or f of, um, f of 0 just means 0 cubed plus 1, and then the square root, and the square root of 1 is 1. And then 4 times f of 1 half, so if I plug in 1 half, 1 half to the third is 1 eighth, plus 1 is 9 eighths. So it's okay to just write the square root of 9 eighths because that's a more exact answer. And then 2 times f of 1, 1 cubed is 1 plus 1, so this is 2 times the square root of 2. And then 4 times f of 3 halves, so if I cube 3 halves, I get 27 over 8, and if I add 1 to that, I get 35 over 8, and again, that's a square root, and then f of 2, so 2 cubed is 8 plus 1 is 9, the square root of 9 is 3. So then, from here, I probably you know, wouldn't show a heck of a lot more work. I could go ahead and find those decimal approximations, 4.2426, that's the square root of 9 eighths times 4. And then if I take 2 times radical 2, I get 2.8284. If I take 4 times radical 35 eighths, I get 4.1833, and then plus 3. And then again, I can always use my calculator to help me. This is 1y to the 1.5 and 1y to the first and 1y to the 1.5. But you get the idea that I can use my calculator to help me find those values. 
And then if I find my solution, my solution here is just summing all of those up and of course dividing by six, I get 3.2396. And that's a pretty good approximation. Let me remind you that we found the exact answer previously. And the exact answer previously was 3.2413. And when we did this with the trapezoidal rule, we found 3.2797. So we can see that Simpson's rule is a better approximation and almost always will be. Um, but obviously the exact answer is the very best. We're now going to redo our second example that we've done with the trapezoidal rule, now with Simpson's rule. And again, we're still using the same formula that we did before, and we're still going to need to know what delta x is. And remember, delta x is just the b minus a over n, not the three or the two that you would use for trapezoidal or Simpson's rule. We just need to find that delta x. So b minus a is two minus one over n, which is four. And so I end up with a delta x of 1 fourth. And again, the reason I need that is as I'm doing, finding my area, whoops, as I'm finding my area approximation, I'm going to take b minus a or 2 minus 1 over 3n. And then inside, I'm going to have f of my first value, which is 1 but then I'm just going to increase by one fourth. So four times f of one plus one fourth or five fourths plus two times f of one fourth greater than that would be six fourths or three halves plus four times f of, sorry, f of three halves is six fourths plus one fourth is seven fourths and then f of two. So that is how I'm going to find my solution. Two minus one is one, and then three times four is 12, so I have one twelfth. And then I'm going to plug in one to my function. So f of one is one squared divided by four plus one, which is five fourths. And again, I'm continuing, I'm going to plug in 5 fourths, and again, I'm going to multiply it by 4, so that's going to give me 89 sixteenths, 25 eighths, 113 sixteenths, and 2. And then I'm going to find an exact answer, which is 19 twelfths, and an approximate answer, which is 1.5833. And this is my Simpson's rule approximation. And I've kept on here the exact result that we found in the last video when we were talking about um, the trapezoidal rule and then we were comparing it to the actual answer. So this guy is the actual answer. And as you can see, Simpson's approximation actually gave me the exact same answer, which is fantastic. Just as we did with the trapezoidal rule, we have a formula for helping us find the expected area using error, excuse me, using Simpson's rule. And you'll notice that the equation is very similar, but what we're going to do is now we're taking the fourth derivative and we have n to the fourth and b minus a to the fifth. So let's take a look at what we can expect our expected error to be. Um, based on our last example. So b minus a would still be 2 minus 1 to the fifth. My denominator is 180 times n is 4, so 4 to the fourth. And then just as before, we had f is equal to x squared over 4, f prime is equal to 2x over 4 or 1x over 2. f double prime, you'll remember, was 1 half the third derivative would be zero and the fourth derivative would be zero. So as I can see, the max of the fourth derivative would in fact be zero. So I can expect my error in this case to be essentially the same result as what I would find given the exact value. 
And we had found that as well. When we did the exact value, we found it was 19 twelfths. And when we did Simpson's rule, we found the answer was 19 twelfths. And so we can see that we got the exact same answer either way. But again, not a difficult formula to use. Again, in case you were to have some sort of x value involved in your fourth derivative, you would just want to check the two um, endpoints of the integral, the two limits of integration, to make sure that you had the maximum value for whatever your function was. We do not cover section 8.7 in this course, and so we are going to continue past integration by tables on to improper integrals.